Welcome back to Spoilt Rotten Beads. I'm Juliet. It's lovely to see you all again. And um, please let me know if you're watching. Actually, it would help if I opened up the chat, wouldn't it? Because then I can actually see if you're talking to me or not. So let me just open up the chat and say hello to you all. There you go. I'm, uh, I can see if you're chatting to me now. Um, so welcome back to Spoilt Rotten Beads. Summer is finally here, um, which is fantastic. It's absolutely scorchio here in Haddenham. We're really, really hot in the warehouse packing all of your orders. I can see some of the chat coming in, so I'm going to say my hellos. Hi, Lindsay. Oh, welcome. Your first ever time watching a live video. That's really cool. Well, you caught me live. Welcome. Hi, Donna. How are you? Donna has a very special place in today's live video because we are going to be doing these absolutely gorgeous coral stitch earrings with the pattern um, provided for us all by the wonderful Donna from Beach and Boho Jewelry. You'll find a link um, through to Donna's website um, on the description for this video. So do head over and see all of her beautiful jewelry because she's a very talented lady and she makes the most gorgeous jewelry because i love her jewelry and i'm always um i'm always kind of commenting on it and, and buying bits and pieces for myself as well because um i love the colors and the way that she makes things they're really gorgeous and i'm really in love with these coral earrings which go so well with my new dress that i got from fat face at the weekend because of course i had the earrings so then i had to buy the dress to go with the earrings because that's what i do i don't buy earrings to go with dresses <laughs> A bit bonkers. Um, so, hi Tanya, hi Dale, hello Erica, hi Rachel. Oh, Dale is in the MS in the U USA, oh, Gulfport. I don't know where that is, Dale, but I'm, it sounds lovely. I'm sure it is. <laughs> Lindsay says, when are we allowed to come to the shop in person? Well, we have got a plan in place. It's at the early stages yet. So, um, so at the moment, so leave that with me and um, we will come back to you on that one. But we do have a plan um, to um, do some, allow people to come shopping again at Sport Rotten Beads in the, in the sort of hopefully not too distant future. So leave that with us and we will, um, as soon as we've got a little bit more information, then we'll let you know. Um, so I'm just going through all the chat, see if I've missed anybody. Um, I don't think I have. Let me just take one of these earrings off. Rachel says it's a glorious day. It is an absolute glorious day. And and these earrings are perfect for a glorious day because they're very kind of tropical this lovely kind of coral effect um, and Donna has done these for me in this gorgeous Picasso turquoise here and um, I'm going to do them um, using a size 11 Toho bead in the lovely rainbow turquoise finish oh that's lovely Lynn yes thank you Donna for your wonderful pattern it was absolutely gorgeous hello Sherry in North Carolina um, so let me just make myself a little bit smaller and move myself across to the edge there and then you can see me hopefully there we go and you can see my bead mat too there we go pop myself in the corner pop myself in the corner and then you can still see me and I can still see you guys and you can see my bead mat so what I'm going to do is take off one of my earrings because I want to kind of show you the difference because I've done my earring here I have done it in um I've done it in Toho size 11s um, and Donna has used the lovely Miyuki size 11s and there is a difference in the way that they look and I think it's always nice to compare them alongside one another. Um, hey Kathleen, okay so Donna as I say used this lovely Picasso turquoise and I have used um, this Toho bead here and the Toho bead I have used is a Toho opaque rainbow turquoise and Toho seed beads are a little bit bigger than um, than Miyuki seed beads and as a result these earrings have come out quite a bit longer actually even though we both followed exactly the same pattern you can see the difference down here between the two so I would say that the Toho's are about half a centimeter longer the finished earring is than the um, than the Miyuki and if I just put my finished Toho earring in you can see these are kind of real sort of um, shoulder sweepers these are really nice and long so that's my Toho there and it's made with the same pattern that pattern that Donna did um, and Donna's 
Miyuki is on this side here and you can see that it's a little bit shorter um, and a little bit more delicate than the Tohos because the Tohos are a little bit bigger. Um, so I just think it's kind of quite cool to see the difference. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to get started with these. I'm going to talk to you about how to do this stitch if you want to make yourself a necklace um, or a bracelet using the coral stitch instead of, um, instead of a pair of earrings. But before I do, I just have got something that I wanted to show you because um, we've just had a, um, a delivery at Spoil Rotten Beads and uh, we love our deliveries. And I've just whizzed along to the warehouse um, to pick up the, um, the beads that we've got, the newbies, um, so that I can photograph them. And I thought that whilst I was here with you guys, I could show you guys the new deliveries. So these are our new Etoile crystals. And they come on these strands and that I think there are about five or six different colors um, and they are just stunning I am in love we are well we are all in love with these let me show you here you go um, I'm just looking at your comments there um, these are the new Etoile crystals and you can see them right next to these Toho size 11s here they are actually the same size as a Toho size 11 seed bead. So you could do these gorgeous coral stitch earrings with sparkly crystals if you wanted to. Um, so I think that you could interchange these Etoile crystals um, for Toho size 11 seed beads. Um, and there are just some stunning colours there. Um, I think we've got, yeah, there's six colours. There's this gold, this lovely kind of pinky tone, pinky purpley. There's a kind of a green iris, a blue, and then this, this, the silver, and then this peacocky shade here, which isn't showing up so well on the camera, but actually it's very peacocky. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, they're not on the site quite yet, Lorraine, but they will be in about an hour's time, because my next job when I finish this video is to pop these babies on the site, because they are just gorgeous, and they're a really good price as well. They're a really decent long strand, actually. You get about 250 crystals. Um, you can see, look, just before I've even done anything, that's kind of about ooh, just under 16 inches, I'd say. Um, about 240, 250 crystals on the strand. Um, so um, they will be going on the site shortly, but I just thought I'd show them to you because I did have a brainwave when I was unpacking them and thought, wow, what would these earrings be like if they were done in crystals instead of seed beads? They'd be amazing. <laughs> so let me pop those to one side um, and, um, and get on with the tutorial. <laughs> Donna's saying she's got to get those. I can't wait to see what you do with those, Donna. Spaghetti strap for dresses and bracelets. Oh, that's a good idea, Fran. That is a great idea. Okay, get my specs on um, and let me talk you through everything that you're going to need to make these coral stitch earrings. So, as of course there always is at Spoil Rotten, there is a nice pattern that you can download from the website. It's done by Donna from Beach and Boho Jewelry. Um, and it's these lovely coral stitch earrings. It's got a nice, easy to follow. Um, Di um, photographs that Donna did for us um, so it's a lovely easy to follow pattern it's great for beginners so if you are a beginner you know this is a great pattern to start off with um, and I'm going to talk you through how it works but I'm also going to talk you through how you could adapt this pattern to make yourself a necklace if you wanted to and I will say um, that um, that there are kits available as well. So we've got about three different colorways of kits available at the moment for these lovely coral stitch earrings. So if you wanted to have a go, but you didn't want to buy a whole tube of seed beads, then you know that would be a good way to go. But if you've just got some size 11 seeds in your stash, um, then you're away, because that's pretty much all you need. Um, I have We have used a crystal on the top of these, but you could probably use any, any bead from your stash for these. Show us with the new beads, please, says Tina. Well, um, I'm hoping that um, we'll have something lovely to show you with the new beads soon. I have, I've got some more. Shall I show you some of the new, more new beads that we've got as well? Before I go on, I will, because I just love these two. These are going on the site later today as well. These are some more gorgeous crystals. And they come in a few different colorways. And they're like a gemstone crystal. 
um, because they've got these kind of lovely mixes of colours. And I think, again, I think there's four different colourways of these mixes. Um, lovely kind of soft summer pastels there. <laughs> Tina's is all shiny. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm in love with these. They're absolutely gorgeous. So they're a little bit bigger than the Etoile crystals that I showed you a moment ago, um, but they are going on the site in a little bit as well. So um, you'll see those getting on the site in about an hour or so. Once I've had my lunch, uh, she'll be getting these on the website. So, but yeah, they're gorgeous, aren't they? But they, they are, aren't they, Donna? Donna's saying that they're like sparkly morganite. This this colour in particular is just like morganite. Um, it's just gorgeous, really pretty, lovely sort of summer shades. So I must stop showing you the newness and get on with showing you this pattern. So to make your coral stitch earrings, you're going to need some size 11 seed beads. And I'm using Toho here in um, opaque rainbow turquoise. Um, then you'll need a four millimeter bead to just to add at the top here to, to use, um, sort of just to make the loop really to attach either your clasp or your ear wire, depending on whether you're making a pair of earrings or a, um, or a, necklace. You'll need an earring finding like this, like a little stud earring finding if you're making um, a pair of studs. Um, um, but if you're not, if you could just have a clasp instead of the earring finding, then that would be fine. How do you buy just on your site? Tina, yes, you just go onto our website. There's about 7,000 different products there and everything is for sale on the website www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk and this video will be available on the website as well so if you want to um, buy a kit or download the pattern and just sit and make along with me then you can do so um, this this video will stay around it's not going anywhere when I'm done so um, so the first thing you need to do is thread up your needle with um, the longest length of thread that you're happy working with because this pattern really does eat thread because you're going backwards and forwards on yourself um, to create little coral branches for the earrings. So, you know, just start with a really nice long length of thread and then you probably won't have to join any. Yeah, Christine's saying this is great for a seed bead stash buster. It absolutely is. Um, and um, as I say, we're using, I'm using a Toho bead. If you're using a Miyuki bead, it's exactly the same, but you'll find it's a little bit of a shorter effect about half a centimetre shorter with a um, for your earrings with a Miyuki than it is with a Toho. And um, as Donna said when she wrote this pattern, it's a really good idea to work in fives with this pattern. If you work in fives, you'll find that um, you won't get stuck and it will kind of, it will make sense as I go along in a minute. But working in fives is a good way. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how to sort of decide the length of your necklace or, necklace or your earrings. And um, working in multiples of fives is a good way for that. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just pick up three seed beads and then go through the loop on my earring finding. And then pick up another three seed beads. Okay, and I feel like my camera is a little bit, uh, a little bit too far out. So I'm just gonna go out a little bit so that you can see. There you go, more of my bead mat now. Okay, so I've got three seed beads and my earring finding. And if I was making a necklace, I'd have three seed beads and one half of my clasp. Um, but I'm just gonna go make my earring. So I'm going three seed beads and one half of my clasp or my earring finding and I'm taking those down towards my tail of thread and as I say I've got quite a lot of thread here because I didn't want to have to join on and um, I'm actually just going to tie a knot now. So I'm just tying a knot there. So you end up with a little circle of beads like that. And I always like to, to make it extra secure by just tying a double knot. So that's what I'm going to do. 
okay so that's how you start off so if you were making a necklace you would just put your clasp there instead of um, part of your earring finding I sound a bit hay fevery. I am a bit hay fevery, Fran. You're totally right. I am a little bit snuffly. I always get a bit snuffly at this time of year. All the tree pollens come out and things. Oh, that's nice, Liz. Just looking at all your comments. Hi, Becky. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is pick up a um, crystal. And the crystal... It's kind of just a nice way to finish and start off the design. Okay, and this next bit is where you decide how long you want your earrings to be. And um, with the lovely pattern from Donna here, we're going to start off by picking up 45 size 11s. Okay, and that's going to make an earring that's the same length as the one I've got on my mat here. And it would help if I'd measured it beforehand, wouldn't it? But I'm going to get a tape measure and show you guys how long that is. So this earring from the very top of the um, of the earring finding to the base is just over eight centimetres long there, just over eight centimetres. And if I just put my Miyuki next to it, you can see the difference. So the Miyuki made with exactly the same number of beads is about just over seven. So it's actually nearly a centimetre difference. So this is just over seven centimetres long made with Miyuki. So if you can, um, you can sort of determine how long you want your earrings to be beforehand, but I would work in multiples of five and I'm gonna make another really nice long pair of earrings here. So I'm gonna pick up 45 size 11s. I'm just looking at your comments. Could you add a tiny crystal or a tiny gemstone? Yeah, you could. To add a little bit of sparkle on the end, you could use a different color on the tips of the coral if you wanted to. So that's a great idea, Kaylee, I like that. Um, right, so I am going to pick up 45, so I'm going to go quiet while I count now, <laughs> two, three, Right. So I have got 45 beads on now. And if I was making a necklace, I would just keep threading beads on until I had the finished length of my necklace. And then I would add another crystal on and make another loop for the other end of my clasp. So you would attach your clasp to a long length of seed beads um, just exactly the same the other end as you are at this end and you do that at this stage oh thank you Fran they are packing super fast at the moment we have had a lot of changes in our warehouse over the last um, few weeks and um, we're now able to pack and dispatch a lot quicker than we were so you'll find your orders will be arriving a lot faster fingers crossed from now on so that's really cool um, so that is your beginning, okay? So if you're making your necklace, you just want to keep threading on your beads until you've reached the desired length of your necklace. Um, and I'm gonna remind myself what to do next. Here we go. Right, so now I'm gonna pick up three more size 11s. So on top of my 45, I've just picked up a further, th a further three size 11s there, okay? And, oh, thank you, Becky. It's good to see you. Um, and I'm now going to stitch up five. This is why we say work in fives. Stitch up five of my seed beads in my main 
sort of stem, okay, and pull tight. And you see you get this little pico edge there, okay, and that's what's going to form your coral fronds. And as someone was saying earlier in the chat, you could use different colours for these three end beads, that would look really pretty. Um, so you want to keep quite a strong tension um, when you're doing this, because that's what's going to make the beads sort of form that little pico there. I wonder if I should zoom in. Can you all see okay? Shall I zoom my camera in a bit? Let's just let's just zoom in a bit. There we go. There we are. Now you can hopefully see a bit better what I'm up to. Um, and now I'm going to pick up eight Chris eight seed beads. That's four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And I'm going to miss out the last three that I added. I'll miss out the last three and go back up through the first five that I added. And pull tight. And there's my second little frond. Just looking at your chat here. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I'm going to stitch up through five seed beads in the main stem, like that. I'm just checking you guys can see that. So I'm going up through that main stem now. Just making sure I haven't got my thread looped around itself. Okay, and pull tight. And you can see those first two little fronds there. Just got a little bit of a tangle in my thread. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to repeat the last step. So I'm going to pick up eight seed beads. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Miss out the last three. That I added and go through the next five. And pull tight. And there's the next little frond there. And now I'm going to pick stitch up through five beads again in my main stem. One, two, three. Five. So this is why it's easy. If you work in multiples of five, you won't get lost. And I'm just keeping my thread tension nice and tight, but you can see that's beginning to look like um, the fronds now on some coral. If you just joined us, we're making these lovely coral frond earrings here. Um, there's a free download over on the website that you can head over to the website, download that. That's um, in the chat link to this free pattern. Um, if this pattern, yeah, I guess you could. That's a good idea. Fran's saying, um, if you did this pattern using fine wire, could you make a tree? Yeah, I guess you could. Good idea. Um, now I'm going to repeat this again. So I'm going to pick up 13. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. So I've picked up 13 beads this time. And I'm going to miss out the last three and go through the next five. So I'm making like a little double frond now. Okay. And now I'm going to pick up eight. That's three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight. Let me just check. Is that eight? Yes, it is. And once more, miss out the last three, go through the next five, and then through the next five on that original set of 13 that I added there. I'm just pausing so you guys can see what I'm up to. If 
pull it tight. And you see you've kind of got a, like a double branch there. And now I can go up through five on my main sort of stem because I'm back to the main stem again there. Back through the five there. I'm keeping my thread tension nice and tight and that is making it sort of these little pico edges appear and um, holding it all together really. So I'm going to repeat that last step now, making double branches all the way up my stem here. Um, so of course if you were doing a, a necklace you'd just keep doing this as well. So if it was a necklace it would be exactly the same. So I'm picking up 13, so that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13. You can see this is a great, it's a beginner's stitch. Um, missing out the last three, going through the next five. Picking up eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. Christine saying that she has used wire in a similar pattern, making tiaras. Yeah, it is actually similar to tiara making, isn't it? Going through the next five and then through the five from that original. It's at 13. So this is all illustrated in the free downloadable pattern. And then up through the next five. In the main stem and then we just repeat. So if you just joined us this pattern um, was written by Donna from Beach and Boho Jewellery um, and there is a link to Donna's um, website over on our YouTube channel so um, do head over and take a look at her beautiful jewellery because she does some absolutely gorgeous things. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Oh, you're giving Don Donna ideas now, Fran. Okay. So if I was doing this um, not on air, I probably wouldn't be using the um, black fire line that I'm using at the moment because um, it would probably look better if I was doing it in a in a white flat fire line. But I just know it's much easier for everybody to see. What I'm up to if I'm doing it in a black fire line. So I tend to be with black fire line when I'm doing a video. Um, so we're going to keep on doing this all the way up the length of the earrings. And then when we get to the top, we're going to make another main branch. And you can make the other main branch. The same length as the one you've just done, or you can make it shorter, it's up to you. I actually made mine a bit shorter um, for these earrings, um, for the, the secondary branch. I think if I just separate them, you can see this one is a little shorter than this one. I think I did this one with 40 instead of 45, so that it kind of went to a little bit of a, of a point. Just going to grab myself some more beads and check the chat. See, we've got about 60 people with us today, which is really cool. Um, thank you very much if you've just joined us. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen. These are real holiday earrings, aren't they? They really are. They kind of do make you feel like putting on a summer dress or a, just hanging out at the beach or in the, or even just in the pub garden. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. And then ups 
three. My next five, three, four, five. Here we are. So you can see if you were making a necklace, you know, that would be absolutely gorgeous, wouldn't it, as a necklace? Um, and you can make multiple strands and have them all together. Um, and you can, um, if you're making a necklace, to make it so that they didn't all sort of hang down the same way, you could put some shorter strands on as well. And then um, and you're going to get kind of a little more variation. But this works really well for earrings because they're going to all hang down like that. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're making a necklace. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Just check in the chat. Everyone's very quiet today. Five. And then another five, another eight here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, and through my five here. There you go, and up through here. There you go. I'm nearly at the top now. Three, four. So this is going to be my last. My last little set here, I think. Let's see, we've got Are you all concentrating, says Tina. <laughs> Is anyone beading along with me? Is anyone doing this alongside me? If they are, please pop, um, please take some photos and pop them on the Facebook group, Spoiled Russian Beaders, because it's just, it's so cool to see what everyone's doing. And you give us all so many wonderful ideas. Six, seven. 12, 13, and then through my five. I think the coral stitch is one of these stitches that looks like it's going to be really complicated because you get that sort of lovely natural effect, but actually it's not. It's nice and simple. And up through, and I'm now coming out right next to that um, crystal. I'm actually going to put one more branch on here just to make them nice and full at the top. And I'm doing proper work. I did, did I see Glister's photo? Would it work as a pendant? Yeah, it would, Rachel. That's a good idea. It would. It would look kind of just lovely, wouldn't it? You can imagine like a coral pendant there. It would look really gorgeous. I like that idea. So now this is going to be my last little front here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You see how this pattern does eat thread. I started off with so much thread and I will, I will have enough to finish, but it has really used a lot of thread. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So back through the five, through the five on that. Set of 13 there. Okay, and you can see I'm now, let me just get everything out of the way. I'm back now at the at the crystal, and I'm gonna go up through the crystal, round through everything um, in the little loop there. I'm gonna knot onto my tail of thread again and then come back out through the crystal. And then I'm gonna trim off my tail of thread and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I've just done um, to make another branch. 
you could keep going with these. You can make them as full as you like. I saw that Donna on her, um, I think on one of her designs, she's done some really super full ones, which just look stunning. So you can keep on adding to these to make them as, as full as you want them to be. So I'm back now to my tail of thread. So I just, because, I, because I'm back there, I just like to use the opportunity just to tie another knot because it just makes everything nice and secure. And then back down through that crystal. And I'm using, this crystal is a Chrysolite Opal Preciosa bicone. Okay, and I'm just going to trim off my tail of thread because I don't need that anymore. Okay, and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing to make another another branch of coral so that these earrings are nice and full. But I'm going to just pick up 40 beads this time so that it's just ever so slightly, ever so slightly shorter. Um, but then I'm just going to repeat everything I've just done, but starting off with just with 40 beads this time. Just checking that the message is, hi Patricia, hello beaders of the world, <laughs> hello in New York, she's in New York, hello in New York, how wonderful, right, so 40 beads this time, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 40. Okay, so this is going to be ever so slightly shorter than um, my first branch. So I'm picking up three. I'm gonna go back up through the last five. And then I'm gonna pick up eight, four, five, six, seven, eight. And go back up through the last five. 